what's good welcome to my channel manifesting with karmic side gal my name is shakayla and here on my channel i discuss manifesting the life you deserve to have my journey and process through ascension and spirituality in general if you are new here welcome i am so glad to be here in this space with you and all i ask is that you go ahead and like this video if you did enjoy it subscribe to my channel and click that notification bell so you can be notified each and every time that i post now if you are part of the spiritual family big hearts go out to you guys i am so blessed and honestly just in gratitude that you guys continue to watch my content and i am so excited to be with you all here today now if you can see from the title of this video today i am going to be discussing the four agreements if you haven't heard of the four agreements before this is a book written by don miguel ruiz and this is a book all about finding your personal freedom what is personal freedom guys personal freedom is really detachment from any physical worldly 3d things that limit our consciousness and our mindset that really blocks our manifestations period and blocks us from achieving success by being the best and most authentic version of ourselves so today i'm going to just lightly touch on the four agreements the purpose of the book and why you should read it for yourself and what i got out of the book personally before I jump in, I'm going to tell a little story time per usual, but I just want to talk about a moment that happened to me last week and it really made me a proud mama, okay? I was talking on the phone with my daughter, Eva, and I'm about to get teary-eyed just thinking about it because it just made me feel so good and like I'm doing the right thing as a parent. If you're a parent, then you know there's a lot of fears with parenting because you're scared that you're gonna mess up. You may have some fears that you're gonna cause your child traumas and the last thing that you wanna do is do is give them trauma. A lot of parents base their parenting off of exactly the shit that their parents didn't do for them and you know, making sure that they're giving those things to their kids that they didn't get, whether that is in a material sense or a spiritual sense or emotionally. And then, you know, a lot of people, they just look at how they were parented as a guidebook of what not to do. And nowadays, a lot of people are learning more and discussing more about gentle parenting. And I'm all for that. I'm all for treating kids like humans and respecting them the same that you would respect an adult. And that's how I move in a world of parenting. The same things that I share with you guys, I also share with my kids who are nine and six. And I just do it on the level where they can comprehend it. So I'm on the phone with Eva the other day and she's eating these cheese crackers. You guys know the cheese crackers that um, it's like, I don't know, like six of them in a pack or sometimes it's like four in a pack. And it's like Ritz crackers or something on the outside. And then it's like this just layer of cheese, right? And... She's like talking about how she loves them or whatever. She's opening the cracker up and she's licking the cheese off of the cracker. And she tells me, um, I was eating this cracker like this at school and my friends told me you're supposed to just bite the cracker, not lick it. And I told them, well, this is how I like to do it. And I'm going to keep doing what I want to do. And... I just felt so proud of her that once she advocated for herself in a space where she could have been potentially being bullied or just being misunderstood because she did something different. And then she embraced her differences, accepted who she was and just said, this is what I like. And ultimately I'm always gonna do what I like and I'm gonna put me first, Lucia. I gotta put me first. I gotta put me first. I gotta put me first, Lucia. And I felt so good that she knew that she understood that and I knew that it was because the type of parent that I am to her. And I feel good that she knew that for herself. And I felt good as a mom knowing that I'm instilling the right beliefs and values into my kids so that, you know, as they grow, as they mature, that they're ultimately advocating for themselves and just 
searching for their own personal freedom. So in the four agreements, one of the main things of the book is just to know that where you are consciously, where you are mentally is ultimately what manifests into your physical lives. So the things that we believe, our ideas, our thought processes, a lot of it is learned behaviors and it's never fact check, right? It's like we're in kindergarten, somebody tells us this knowledge and then we're just supposed to believe any and everything that somebody tells us just because we're an adult. And honestly, a lot of people continue to repeat this behavior through life. You can get on TikTok right now and somebody will literally be spreading misinformation. And instead of going to fact check, the next person is just going to spread that misinformation. So the main thing about your personal freedom and achieving a mindset where you are a free thinker and putting your values, your beliefs and what you want first is that heaven and hell is not a physical place. It's not necessarily somewhere that when you die your soul is ascending to heaven and hell heaven and hell is literally a mental space it's a a state of consciousness okay where rather your beliefs are either higher or lower whatever your perspective is of a situation is going to create your emotions what what everything that you think is going to be surrounded with that So if I personally am having a hard time, if I look at it and I say, oh, this is the end of the world. I'm just fucking dying. I just hate this so much. It's just, you know, if you really make yourself a victim to a circumstance, then you really will be. But if you are having a difficult time and what I have been doing lately is saying, I am a spiritual being having a human experience. I am a spiritual being having a human experience. I'm a spiritual being having a human experience. And that allows me to be present in my feelings to see what it is, the emotions that are arising, how it is I can support myself during that time and ultimately understand that our environments change all the time and there's always going to be good times. There's always going to be bad times, but you never want to lower your vibration, your consciousness to the environment that you're in. Because at any given time, your environment could change. Does that mean that your consciousness should change just because you're in a different environment? No. But if you believe that everything is hell, everything is bad, everybody is out to get you, then that's what's going to manifest in your life because that's literally what you believe. So we're going to jump in and really get into these four agreements. I want you guys to let me know in the comments, what's your favorite agreement, which one resonates with you the most. And also number two, let me know which one that you have the most difficulty adhering to. Okay. Because the purpose of the four agreements is to release all the agreements that we agreed to before we even knew that we were consciously agreeing to them, which is those learned behaviors and thought processes and patterns and even sometimes you know religions and whatever it is that we believe that people told us that we should believe even things about ourselves. like I'm gonna give more examples as I go into it the first agreement is to be impeccable with your word to be impeccable means to be without sin and the ultimate sin is a sin against yourself which is you know, the words and the beliefs that you have with yourself and for other people. And if you guys ever heard the saying like word is bond, or if you say like all a man has is his word, which is absolutely true. It's just like standing up for what you believe in and advocating for other people and understanding that what you speak is what it is. So if I say I am beautiful, I am amazing, I am smart then I'm going to believe those things. I'm going to accept those things as my truth. Now, if I say negative things about myself, um, then I'm going to start to believe that. I'm going to consciously start to adapt those things and then they're going to come out in my behavior and my emotions and it's going to manifest physically in my life. And we do the same thing with other people. We cast spells on other people when we say, this person is that way, like, Say one thing is like my relationship with my father. I will say all the time, this guy is a this or that, or he ain't never going to do this. 
And honestly, I truly believe that. And that's the way that things have been and they've never changed. And part of that is probably has to do with obviously what how that person is as a person, but also what I'm personally choosing to believe about that person. Maybe if I had a different belief about them, um, I would behave differently in situations with them instead of expecting them to always be that past version of themselves. The second agreement is to not take anything personally. Now, what does that mean, not taking anything personally? Well, it's just one, not being self-centered in your relationships. A lot of times when people behave a certain way, when they talk to you a certain way, when they say things about you that are not true, it's really a reflection of how they feel about themselves. So it's best just to not take things personally. It's best to just not accept what they are saying as your truth. This is another thing with my kids all the time. They'll be arguing and eventually they'll get so sick of arguing with each other that they have to, um, you know, pull me into the argument like mom he said this she said that and just the other day my kids were arguing and max said ever said that i was stupid and i'm dumb and i said max is that true and he said no and i said so why do you care just say okay whatever just let it roll off of your back because it's not true And then, of course, I went back and I told Eva those things was unkind and you don't want to treat others how you wouldn't be treated. But the only thing that you can do is focus on yourself. You can't change other people and you don't want to. You don't want to ever be in a position where you feel like you are arguing or trying to get your point across to people because it's your own personal truth. It's not for somebody else to believe or to see it your way or anything. It's all about what you personally believe. And sometimes you just have to agree to disagree, respect other people's opinions, but that doesn't mean that they ultimately have to be your truth. And for this second agreement, you just want to make sure you're not taking things personally because nine out of 10 times, it's just not about you. In human relationships, everything is a reflection. We're constantly mirroring each other and... We would be so upset all the time. We would be so triggered all the time. And we were constantly um, worried and so invested in what other people thought about us. Like what other people think about you is none of your business. And ultimately how other people treat you, it's just karma. It's just the same energy that they are pouring back into themselves. So you have to consciously choose not to be that guy but you also have to consciously choose to just not give a fuck the third agreement is to not make assumptions okay you guys ever heard that saying when you make an assumption you make an ass out of you and you make an ass out of me one time somebody said that to me and I felt really stupid but I also reflected on that saying and I was like you know what damn that is like pretty naive and also it's just it makes no sense to kind of assume things when you can clarify and just ask questions the basis of the third agreement is mostly just communication okay people cannot know what it is that you are thinking or how you are feeling, you have to communicate that. And if somebody it has not communicated with you their feelings or their beliefs, then you shouldn't just automatically assume that they have a certain belief or feeling or idea. You should always just ask questions. There is no such thing as a stupid question and you can always clarify. Now, if a person refuses to answer or clarify or anything you still don't have an answer so the only thing you can say is it's just not true ultimately you want to fact check like period don't just assume things all day our mind its own entity it constantly makes up stories about ourselves about other people about 
the people in our environments, based off of our own personal experiences with these people and with other people. So, you know, I could be in my current relationship and I could be assuming things based off of how somebody operated in a previous relationship of mine. And that's not really fair to my current partner. It doesn't make any sense. So whenever I'm having like a lot of thoughts on my mind or I'm just like assuming things and it's kind of like making me feel some type of way, I never hesitate to communicate and ask questions to my partner um, and say like, does this, this and this or, you know, how are you feeling or just really asking questions so that you can get clarity and know because if you don't ask, then you will never know. And the last thing that you want to do is assume that something is the truth when it's not. Another important part about communicating effectively is listening. God gave us two ears and one mouth for a reason. And when someone is communicating with you, if you ask somebody a question, you want to give them the opportunity to truly answer and hear out what it is that they're saying without any preconceived notions or assumptions. Make sure that you are truly listening to people and giving people the opportunity to speak before you make any type of assumptions. Assumptions just make us look and feel silly. And then next thing you know, we are three days later overthinking, made up this whole story in our head about some stuff and it just didn't happen because we didn't communicate. Like the easiest example for this is like in a relationship, if I have trust issues and... I've been cheated on in previous relationships and my partner does something that is sus to me. I could just say, you know, I'm feeling a little insecure about this. Can you clarify to me, you know, like what you were doing or what you meant by that? Because it, it made me feel insecure. I feel in, not even you made me or it made me. I feel insecure because of this, okay? Like you have to communicate what it is that you're feeling instead of just assuming that they're probably cheating on you. Like there's always an explanation for something and it might not be what you wanna hear, but it's better to know the truth than to assume. Like you could think, ooh, this is a good one. I remember this was years ago, so many years ago, I probably was like 20 or 21 or something. And I think I was pregnant with Max. And at the time I was working at Chipotle and for weeks, me and my ex-husband were looking at cars and I had uh, totaled my last car. And luckily, thank God, uh, my bank paid out the car. So we didn't have any more money on the loan. But We were looking at cars for weeks and one day I was at work and this dude was late to pick me up. I was so tired. I had been at work all day. I um, was ready to go home. I was pregnant as hell and he was late. So I'm like texting him, calling him. He's not responding to me. I'm like, oh my God. I automatically assume that he was like, on his game or something and he just didn't leave on time to pick me up maybe he forgot about me and I'm literally like on his voicemail like this is so frustrating like cussing him out like you know what time I get off of work you're at home playing this game and five minutes later this dude pulls up in a brand new car for me my car brand new and do you know how stupid and silly I felt because I literally was accusing him of forgetting about me about being reckless and he was doing something nice for me so just period don't make assumptions just ask questions ask as many questions as you need to to feel comfortable the fourth agreement is always do your best now this this last agreement is really going to set the tone for all of the agreements and allow you to move through life guilt-free with a less stress and just being able to have that self-love nurturing compassion for yourself that you give so freely to other people as you move through life we are going to have mistakes there's going to be lessons there's going to be things that we may even regret at some points of our lives or just 
wish we could have did differently. But if you always give your best effort, if you always do your best, no matter what you're doing, whether it's in a work situation, whether it's parenting, you know, whether it's even in a relationship, if you are truly doing your best, putting the most effort that you can with the tools and knowledge that you have, then you just have to sometimes either take an L or allow yourself to be patient with your growth, okay? Rome was not built in a day. Healing is not linear. Sometimes we be triggered by shit that we feel like we thought we were healed from or we get upset that we shouldn't be upset about it. You know, sometimes we get so mad or irritated ourselves for making a mistake or feeling like we should have known better. And it's like, if you did know better, then you wouldn't have done it. So this is the time to really express compassion for yourself and to remove any judgment. You can release a lot of guilt and shame when you decide not to patch the judgment on yourself for when you mess up or don't do something. Even as far as these other agreements, like being impeccable with your word, me, I try and be as positive as I can, but there's like this second nature to me when I do something or I say something wrong, I'm like, oh, I'm so dumb. Or I, one thing I always say is like, I'm so dense. And it's like, I really know that I'm not dumb. I know that I'm not dense, but it's a habit and you have to break those habits and replace them with better things. Um, and understand that everything is a learning opportunity. So even with the agreements, you're going to mess up. Sometimes you are going to take things personally, but you, as long as you are doing your best at each time, then you just have to not judge yourself and just send a little love to yourself because you still deserve it. You still deserve love. You're still valuable. You're still an amazing person as long as you are doing your best. And you're not out here just intentionally hurting other people, you know, unless, unless you really do know better and you continue to make the same mistakes. And, you know, that's a time for self-reflection is not a time for judgment. Self-reflection allows you to process what happened, what you could have done differently, and then allow you to create better habits and, um, Put yourself in different environments so that you don't make those same mistakes again. That is self-reflection. But you never want to just be constantly criticizing and judging yourself for something that you did your best at, period. That was, you know, my whole spiel, my whole breakdown of the four agreements. This book was so good. And honestly, I've probably read this book about four or five times. And this last time I read it, it really resonated on a new level with me. And I don't know if in the past I really wasn't ready to accept or hear these things, or maybe I just wasn't ready to apply them to my life. Because sometimes it takes spiritual growth, emotional growth even physical growth sometimes for us to have a new understanding or gain a new perspective. But I highly recommend this read. I'm going to put a picture of the book here. If you haven't read it already, definitely check it out. I'm going to link it down on Amazon. And of course, I always read it on Audible. So I am wishing you guys nothing but the best, unconditional love, you know, pure joy and abundance. Make sure that you book with me at fullmoonbeauties.com if you are looking for some spiritual guidance, chakra healing, Reiki, meditation, or even a tarot reading. And also, you know, you can book with me for Meditation Monday every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time at fullmoonbeauties.com. And I will see you in my next video. Peace out.